Hi, this is John with Fixit Planet. Today we've got a Surface Pro 4 that will not power on, even though it is charging. We're going to go over a, a few different things while we get this um, tablet working again. So we're going to go over how you would replace the battery, um, how you could uh, replace or upgrade your uh, solid state drive, and things like that. You can see we'll be using a T4 throughout the process, but you do have a few screws that are slightly different. But for the most part, not all of them are identical, but for the most part, they're all pretty much the same with a couple of exceptions. So just pay attention to what the screws look like and where they're coming from and keep them uh, together. One of the things I want to bring up about replacing the battery is it is held in with some pretty strong adhesive underneath each uh, one of those cells. It is a good idea to use 100% alcohol and um, insert it into or behind or under the battery and allow that to sort of soak in to help loosen the bond and then if you can add some additional heat um, to that as well then that will um, also help soften up the uh, adhesive and then of course you can use a, um, a plastic card of some sort to slide in behind it and um, separate it from the adhesive so that part of the process is not going to actually be in this because we've already done that but we are at least going to show uh, how the battery is um, going to come out and how it will go back in In this case, there is actually a blown resistor over near the CPU area that is required for the CPU to get power, and that is why this is not turning on. And um, so I've seen it referred to as the black screen of death and things like that, so if you have that problem, you may want to check this resistor that we're going to look at here. Now, there are some other situations where it may not run off the battery. We're also going to be removing the old dry thermal paste, so we'll show that process as well. So there's going to be several things that we cover in this video. The only thing we're not going to cover is how to take the screen off. I actually have that in another video that shows the entire process, and we'll leave the link in our description if you want to watch that and see how that's done. Now removing the screen in almost every situation with a few exceptions is going to result in some sort of damage to the screen so it's very difficult to remove the screen without damaging it um, so you may end up having to replace that you might want to be prepared for that in any event now that we've taken out these screws we'll be able to uh, run a spudger underneath uh, the side of the board and raise the board up from the contacts as you can kind of see them shining through as we look down in there right down the center of the battery right here 
and you'll see that they are sort of uh, just you can see the light reflecting off of them those are actually uh, can be bent as well so when you go to put the new battery in, make sure that you don't bend those out of position so there is also a, a, a sort of post that sticks up um, in their uh, middle of the battery. You can see there's one at the bottom, there's one up towards the top there, and there's one, a third one underneath the motherboard that holds that cable into place. So you'll want to make sure that you line those up when you put the new battery in. Now we're going to slide the spudger underneath this cable, which is kind of difficult to see from this angle. Uh, but as we're doing that, we're sort of um, moving that spudger um, back and forth and kind of up and down a little bit, uh, side to side or whatever, in order to separate this flex cable from the back cover. And you can see the copper pads there that the contacts will touch. And those are the two uh, sticky uh, adhesive pads that are holding the battery in place. And we're going to go into a close-up of the motherboard where the blown resistor is near the CPU area that is causing no power here. And we're going to go ahead and replace that resistor. Now, uh, don't hold me to this, but I think it's a 75 ohm resistor um, or thereabouts, 75, um, I think. And um, in any case, it does not have to be the uh, same resistor as long as it has the proper um, resistance. So you can, um, there's a couple of ways you can figure out what that is. In our case, um, we do have some tweezers that that we can use to measure uh, that resistor and see what that resistance is. But um, in, in this case, we also have actually a donor board that we'll be able to pull a good one off of. We'll take a look at that here. Now, even on this one, it's, it's you know, it, it's different. So um, it's the same resistance, but it looks slightly different. So by the time we get done with it those zeros aren't even going to be there anymore so as long as the resistor is good it, it's fine we're going to take this one out here off of this donor board and replace the blown one on uh, the unit that is not powering on for our customer We'll be using a pair of Hakko FM 2023 hot tweezers. Um, that does make it a little bit easier. I'm just sort of zooming out a little bit so we can see a little more of the area where this resistor uh, resides. And it is down below the CPU here. And if it is blown, you will not get power to that CPU, and it won't turn on. Now, I, from what I have seen, that resistor is, is sort of prone to blowing. Uh, so this is um, one area that I would check if you're having this issue and look at that resistor and see. You can tell by looking at that. You don't even need to, uh, you know, be measuring around with a multimeter. You can see that that is, is blown. So if the system is, is actually running off of the AC adapter, but not when you disconnect that AC adapter, so therefore it does not run off the battery, there is another area um, where some diodes uh, reside. And I started to mention it and I got sidetracked, sorry. So 
we're not really looking at that area at the moment and I'll see if I can point it out later on but that's not our problem on this particular tablet today So now that we've got the blown resistor off of our uh, the tablet we're we're trying to repair, uh, we now have um, our good resistor. We want to pull it off of this board, and that's what we're doing now. And uh, my syringe just blew a bunch of flux all over there, so that's a bit more flux than is really required. Now I'm going to get this other board into position while still holding on to that resistor with my tweezers. I didn't get it into position as quickly as I would have liked. So that resistor is starting to change colors on me. So it's not going to be as uh, pretty and clean as it was when we took it out, but it is still a good working resistor and it will be fine. It won't exactly look pretty, but it'll do the job. and having a little difficulty getting it into position as well so alright I'll just touch up the ends of the uh, resistor a little bit uh, make sure there's plenty of solder on those ends and then we will clean up the mess Alright, so what we're going to do now is go ahead and clean the uh, dry thermal paste off. And replace it with some fresh thermal paste. 
So we're just um, going over several different things uh, while we have this one open uh, to try and cover as much material as possible in this one video. So not everything that we have discussed in this video or demonstrated is required to, you know, replace that resistor. But in any case, um, above, just to the left of that uh, CPU where I'm, I'm cleaning the uh, thermal paste off there, there is a, a rectangled uh, region right in the center of the uh, tablet there on that motherboard. And that area, um, if you split it right down the middle, just to the right is all of those areas in in that particular um, all of those components in that area in that particular location is where there are some diodes um, in there and possibly some uh, fats that are uh, potentially could be damaged or, or, or failed or not working properly uh, shorted or whatever the case may be that could potentially cause a problem where the tablet will not run off the battery so that would be the region that you would want to um, troubleshoot if that is your problem since we don't really have that particular problem in this case I'm just bringing it up in passing Now that we've got some fresh thermal paste on the CPU, we're going to go ahead and um, get all our screws and get everything back into uh, position. And we'll do a quick test. And once we're done with that test, I'm going to just jump over to uh, a very quick uh, demonstration of swapping out the solid state drive. It's very easy to do, uh, and it is uh, something that can be done. So we'll be taking, for example, a 128 gigabyte solid state drive and putting in a 256 gig. And then we will be done with this video. Hopefully this will, we cover a lot of information in this one video uh, regarding this particular tablet. And um, hopefully it will find, someone will find that useful. I find it is difficult to find information um, relating to any of this sort of stuff. Uh, when it comes to the Surface Pro, most people will say, toss it, throw it out. You know, there's no information out there. You can't get schematics, which is true. And you can't get board views, which is true. Uh, so I'm just trying to document as much information as I can in some of these um, circumstances where I run into these uh, kinds of issues. And hopefully that will be useful for someone else out there. If you found the video helpful, uh, useful, and interesting, uh, educational, or whatever the case might be, we appreciate it if you like, share, and subscribe. Again, just a reminder, we are going to put a link in the description for this uh, Surface Pro 4 on how to remove the screen and replace it with a new one. So that is a different, whole separate process. It's very involved and um, there are a lot of warnings and risks that can, uh, that need to be addressed. If you've not done it before, you might want to check that out. Or if you just need to see how that is done in order to replace a battery or change your solid state drive out or do some sort of repair.
So this is just our test screen. We're going to um, see we have the charging light just like we did in the beginning of the video, except this time um, it will actually power on. So we're talking literally um, one blown resistor was preventing the whole thing from turning on. And that's all it was. And you can see I've just disconnected the AC adapter. It is still running off the battery. Now we're going to switch over real quick and um, go through the process of swapping out the solid state drive. This is um, an M.2 solid state drive, NVMe. So in this case, we're going to take a 128 gig and we're going to put in a 256 gig, which we've we've got an operating system installed already, Windows 10. So if you have a customer or you have some tablet or something that is not working and maybe you've got another tablet that you can use, you would be able to swap out those drives. In most cases, it will work. There are some exceptions where it may not work. But most of the time, I mean, I personally have not run into a situation particularly where it didn't it didn't necessarily boot up or it blue screened or anything like that. With Windows 10, it does seem to cope with uh, new hardware and will actually install device drivers uh, when it's booting up. Hopefully you found this interesting. If it was helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.